you know, with all the frameworks out there that you can choose from to create AI with, not all of them are good and not all of them are especially ready for production. And this new framework from Pydantic AI, I believe is ready for production. It is good. And I'm gonna show you how we can create powerful agents with them. All right, let's go to begin with the installation. That's the first step is so we're going to pip install Pydantic AI. However, I also wanna use Logfire for the monitoring and debugging, which I'll show you here soon. So I'm gonna install uh, Pydantic AI log fire. So we come in here and you just go ahead and type that in the command and install everything. I already have it. So we can go and get started. Now, the first thing I like to do in these new frameworks or anything kind of new is getting a simple example running. So here we're going to explain this. So from Pydantic AI, we're going to import the agent class. So we're going to create an agent. They have a Gemini example, but I'm going to use OpenAI. So I'm going to use this as the model. So we're going to pass in the model. And then the, the system prompt is just reply with one sentence. And I just want to say agent.run sync. They also have async. Where does hello world come from? And then just print the result. So let's go ahead and run this. We're going to say Python hello world.py. Okay. Yeah, you see we have no logs or spans from Logfire yet. We will in a little bit. So it's running, it's running where does hello come from? And hello world originates from the 1974 book, The C Programming Language by Brian Kernigan and Dennis Ritchie. Okay, great. Now, now I have a simple program running. You'll have this in the GitHub too, so you can just test it. Now let's go ahead and create our web scraper. If you're interested in joining a community to create AI agents and how to use automation and bring them together, whether it's code or no code solutions, join my school community in the description below. So the first thing we need to do is create the actual web scraper agent. So we're going to say create the variable web scraper agent, define the agent class. I'm going to again, I'm going to give it the GPT 4.0. You can easily add in Olama, uh, Gemini, Anthropic, whatever you want here, right? That's, that's not really hard. I'll have a link for where you can do that. We give it a system prompt where I just want to create the website and return the most relevant information. So now we have the dependencies type. We haven't added this yet. We are going to in a minute. You can set the amount of retries. So I'm just going to, by, by default, I think it's two. Um, so I'm just going to set this to two here. And then the result type, which we are also about to create, is I want it to be a class scraped content so that I know what the output of this agent is going to be every time. Okay, so in order to create a dependency, you need to give it the at data class decorator. And then I just have one in here, right? This is just to make sure that you have a fire crawl API key. You know, this could return none and you could have, you just have to return anything if there is no fire crawl API key so it doesn't fail. But so this is the dependency. Now, this right here, just make sure that you have a string API key that is going to be going into this agent, right? It's not, you're not actually setting it yet. This is just making sure that something, this is going to be validated. Okay, so then we have the result type of scraped content. So I created a type of class called scraped content with the base model. We've done this with crew AI before, so this really isn't too different. So I'm gonna have it the content of the scraped website, which will be a string or the summary. And then I'm gonna have the key points, and this will be a list of a key point class. So I have a key point class here, which just is gonna be a singular key point. So when we go to summarize it and give, it's gonna give the key points of that website. You know, we're gonna have a singular key point, but in the scraped content, there'll be a list of those. So there could be one, two, 10, whatever that may be, right? Whatever the LLM gives us back. Okay, so now we have the agent, we have given the dependencies needed, and then we have the result that we want to get back, the what the class or the structure of the result is gonna be. Now, we actually need to create the tool. Now, whenever you go to create any tool, right? As I mentioned, we are going to use Firecrawl. You know, not every tool, not like something like Firecrawl is popular, right? It almost has 20K GitHub stars. Now, this is this actually has a Python library, such as Airtable. They have a Python library that you can install and you can use with that tool. But, you know, not every time that's going to happen. Sometimes it's going to be an HTTP request and you're going to have to either use the get or post, put options, whatever that may be, right? You're going to have to use that for your tool. But with Firecrawl, they actually have a library that we can use called Firecrawl. So if I were to scroll down here, you know, this shows you how to install it. This is a simple use. We would create a Firecrawl app object. This is to crawl a website. This is to check the crawl status. And then this is actually what we want right here. This is to actually scrape it. Now you can see just how simple this is, right? So I'm essentially going to be copying this and then putting that into the tool for the agent. And this is a sample response as well. So you can see what you would like to have. All right, so we have the Firecrawl app here, which is going to be using the Firecrawl API key, which we will also get from the same website. Then if we scroll down here, 
we have a decorator called at WebScraper agent. So we know that we're talking about this agent up here and we want to give that a tool and we just want to name it scrape website. Now there's something called run context here, right? So this is just information at the context for this function, right? And we're going to be passing this in. So the context is the type is going to be the dependencies here. So it's no, we need the firecrawl API key. So if we look up here, the dependency is the firecrawl API key. When we go to run this, we'll see that. But we really need, what we really need is the URL to be passed in here so that we can call uh, firecrawl. So we'll go over this. I'll go over this log fire in just a minute. But we'll, what we really need is this app.scrape URL. This is copying it from that website. So we get the result. I set the data to this result, which you don't need to do um, because you can do more with this. But um, we're going to set the span attribute to that data, which will be used with log fire. OK, so I know I'm just kind of spanning, getting over that in just a minute. But let me go over. Uh, this and then we'll go back to log fire and how to set that up because that is something different we knew we do need to set up so basically if there is data just return what was scraped from whatever website we are giving here whatever url is being passed into this tool go ahead and just return that data and now we actually need to run this so i'm going to set a variable called firecrawl api key which is getting the firecrawl api then we set the dependencies object so i'm giving it that firecrawl API key. The result is then is going to run the web scraper agent. And I'm going to give it actual firecrawls uh, dev URL with these dependencies. So it's going to make sure that the firecrawl API key is an actual string and that it will actually work. Then I'm just going to print out the result. Let me go over this log fire really quick and then I will run this and then explain what's actually happening. So when you go to log fire, which is just pintantic.dev slash log fire, I'll put that in the link in the description. You're going to log in, just go ahead and, you know, I use my GitHub, whatever it may be, right? You can just go ahead and log in. It's free. You don't have to worry about paying for anything here. All right, we have to create a new project. So you'll create a new project. You can call this whatever. So Pydantic example, then go ahead and create project. Then it kind of gives you the instructions here. So, right. So we already have, uh, we already have everything installed. So go to write tokens. We're going to create a new token, just call this uh, test, whatever you want to call it, create the token. So I'm going to copy this, click done. This is you need to configure the environment. We need to set the log fire token environment variable with that right token. Okay, the last thing is we need to authorize our local environment. So I will have this page as well. The, the thing is, uh, these documents are kind of scattered. So I will have these in the description so they're easier for you to find out. So here's uh, here's the second one. We go and try it out. Let's see what that does. So logfire h, you know, for help, just to make sure that we have logfire installed properly. And then next we need to authentic authenticate the local environment. So go ahead and copy this logfire auth. Let's clear this. Let's enter this, and this is going to make sure. Press Enter to open up in our browser. Okay, it's opening it up. Okay, now it says device authenticated successfully. If we go back, so it's now the Logfire credentials are stored here. So you could you could create a project here. However, I want we need to be able to use a specific project so we can have so we can see everything that's happening with our agents. So now we need to type in Logfire projects use. And then I think you can actually just type, if I just type this in, it'll have me choose one. Right. So I have two, right? I did this, um, I did this already. So I'm going to choose one for a pedantic example. Now the project is successfully configured. Now, how do we add it in here? Well, if we go back, it just says import log fire, log fire, and then log fire dot configure. So we import log fire, log fire dot configure. And we're good to go. All right, now let's go ahead and run this. And you can see the web scraper agent. I say, can you give me a summary and key points of this website for firecrawl.dev? So here is the prompt. Okay, it's going to, it's running the tools scrape website, which is great. It's calling the firecrawl API. And what I did here, here is the response printed out. Now, this is kind of a lot to see. So let's fix that and go to logfire. So back in logfire.pentantic.dev, you know, here is the one I just ran. So can you give me a summary of key points of the website? And if you see this little plus button, this log level info, if you click that, then you can get the drop down. So the final result is what we want to see, right? So this here, we have the content because remember we had a pedantic output model, which had content and a list of key points. 
So here is the content for what Firecrawl is. And here are, it gave us eight different key points. And that's wonderful. So we now know this has worked. You know, this took, you know, this took what? Not even 0 0.09 seconds or nine milliseconds, right? Duration for, well, for that altogether. Altogether it was 11 seconds or 12 seconds. But this last one only took nine milliseconds. Then you can kind of see here where it took the longest. Um, you know, this, oh, so this was getting the structured response that took almost seven seconds. I wish that would go away. Yeah, almost seven seconds there. You know, so this is amazing. This is how, you know, we can see everything. And we just created your first agent and tool to web scrape. I mean, and that didn't, that was actually not that bad, right? It didn't, you know, there wasn't too much going on here to make that work. It really didn't take all that much effort. And this is kind of what I want in a framework, right? The framework shouldn't be hard to set up. If something is hard to set up, then, you know, not that it's not that the framework is bad. It's just that it should be easy access, right? Because not everybody is a developer, right? If you're not a developer and you want to get into these AI agent frameworks, there should be some ease of use getting into it, right? And the documentation should be there to help facilitate that. And with this, I will say that like, like a lot of newer frameworks, the the documentation is kind of scattered and you know, you know, there's a lot of words in there. It looks like it's really filled out, but what you actually need there, it's, it's kind of good at, but then there are other, like kind of how it separates things out into log fire, um, how to use it, actually how to install it. It's not as simple, right? They, they don't really direct you very well, but I will have the description for you so that you know how to do that. You can join my school community where I can help you create anything you want in the description below. Here's some more videos you can watch on creating AI agents. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I'll see you next video.